certified, certified real. Hey, I'm a little excited. You heard it here first. Certified real. Airborne. You are now listening to Real Talk Podcast. This is certified. What's good, people? It's your boy Terrell, and we back with another episode of Real Talk Podcast. We got the whole crew here. We got X, we got Gills, we got Banks, and we got Reggie. So today we're doing a movie review on Fatherhood. It's a Netflix exclusive directed by Paul White, written by Donna Stevens. Also, this film was an adaptation from the book Two Kisses for Maddie, a memoir of loss and love that was published in 2011 by Matt and Matthew Lodgeland. I star Kevin Hart, Little Rel, Wanda Wise, Alpha Woodyard, um, Melody Heard, uh, uh, Frankie Faison, I think his name is. I make sure you put all those those heavy hitter names out there. Yeah, Rel, high key, Al- high key a Razzle. good ass cast, high key. Mm-hmm. Yeah. High key. Um, initial thoughts for me, I thought it was good. I thought it was uh, interesting. You know, it was always good to see Black representation on screen. So I definitely enjoyed it, if it was just for that, which I thought. Um, for me, uh, yeah, yeah I, I think you knocked it out of the park. Just, I, I, I liked it. So um, definitely nice to see that change of tempo in his acting. It, he, he went into some kind of bag. Yeah. Gills, what you thought? Initial thought goal. this is a welcome surprise from to the heart. Can you hear me? Can you Repeat hear me? it. Repeat it. We we y'all just started talking like right at the same time. You. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I thought it was a welcome surprise from Kevin Hart. Um just like you said, it was a change of pace. And between this and and you know, like uh upside, you know, I think that's he might have found a new bag as far as finding stories that are based on true life and just bringing them to life with his, you know, with his acting. So yeah, I, I like it. I liked it a lot. About you, Beastly, what you thought? Initial thoughts? I thought it was a, thought it was a great film. Um, I thought it was at least surprised uh, uh, because it's not what you think, even if you think, you think you know what you think. So uh, yeah, think about that one for a while. But uh, yeah, I just thought, thought it was a good film. Very good film, very, very impressed. Yeah, personally, my eyes were glued to the screen the entire time. Very, very easy story to follow. And I'm just going to agree with Gills and Beastly on, you know, being surprised about Kevin Hart's performance. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit deeper about that later, but I just wanted to quickly add that I almost thought that his comedic side was going to oversaturate the whole idea of the film, but it turned out to be very impressive. Like he kind of played the straight man kind of thing. Yeah. 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 It was like, I, I, I was, I was thinking that, it, that the film was going to be a little bit too funny for, for me to take it seriously or, you know, it was just going to be off balance, but I felt like everything, you know, came together. Well, I almost but didn't, uh, I almost felt like there wasn't like the comedy wasn't even there almost like it was, it was that, subtle, subtle. It was, it was, yes. it was like, yes. I, I know there was like, you know, when you could the buildups to the comedic parts, like you could feel it coming and it's just like, just almost regular. I mean, not to say that they didn't have funny parts, but for sure it did. It's just that, you know, with Kevin Hart and you're expecting over the top, over the everything. Top. Yeah. And, and it's just like, it was just a normal dude. And it was like, oh, this is really good. Like, man. I think they definitely use his personality to his advantage because he's probably a naturally funny dude anyway. So they just kind of use that and incorporated it into the story. Didn't, you know, go OD with it. And they just, they just kind of let it flow. Uh, I I thought was good. No, no, I agree with you. I I like the way he leaned on his cast to provide the more of the funny, you know, funny moments. So he could play that, you know, the, the straight character. Uh, and then he could play, he could bounce off of that. Cause, cause Kevin Hart, that's another part. Like he's a comedian. Uh, he can like playing the, like playing the straight man is still part of comedy, right? You have to give people room to bounce off of so that it can be create a funnier scene or create a funnier moment. So I thought he was just 
perfect for this role. And I think I like Little Earl Howery. I mean, he did his thing. I mean, everybody, it was good. It was a good cast. Good Lil who? Lil Rel. I, I think. Um, I think it was Howard different. Or howdy or something like that. Yeah, Howard, I, think, Howard. I think it was different. Um, because usually we're used to Kevin Hart playing that lead comedian. Um, yeah. in the film, right? So we're always looking for Kevin Hart for the the comeback joke or you know the, that response. And I think what was different about this this film because it did have his comedy. But the lead uh, comedian was Lil Rel, and then um, um, Kevin Hart had those, you know, those little moments in it. But he, you know, because you know they did those tropes. You know, you got the funny best friend, the stupid best friend. Like they had those same, those same tropes. You know, the grandmother or the older person that knows everything. Oh, overbearing. Knows, yeah. So they yeah. put they all of the tropes that we've seen in these type of films are there. We're just used to seeing. Kevin Hart play that comedian, like, like think like a man, et cetera, et cetera. He's always that one that's going to bring that comic relief. So I think that was the best part of it um, when we're talking about, you know, his performance, so to say, is that he didn't, like we, the film didn't rely on Kevin Hart to be funny for it to be a good film. So that's what I was mostly impressed with. Yeah, those characters were, um, oh, oh, my bad, I'm going to cut you off, okay? I was just going to say, let's not sleep on, um, uh, Melody Hurd's character, she she's kind of funny too. I, I don't know. I found a lot of the stuff that she did was 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 real funny. Not to say that she was the lead comedian, but uh, I felt she's like a dope. She's dope. dope. She's a dope young yeah. young actress because she was in yes. dumb. Her and the mother, um, Deborah Oronde. I'm definitely mm-hmm. saying that wrong, but they both starred in in dumb. So that's dope that they're coming up like that. You know what I'm saying? So. But uh, um. I did. I did kind of want to get into the production quality. Mm. Um, honestly, just just watching this whole film and watching it several times, you can tell some serious money was put behind this film. Just just looking at how crispy and how clear the shots were. Uh, yes. Just the, the sound quality was good. I thought the soundtrack was cool. I wasn't there. There was. I had no complaints about the uh, soundtrack. Um. There was one shot I did like, and it, it's probably the most simple shot ever. But you, you guys remember the the scene where they were? Um, I think he was in her room, the wife's room, and there was like an ultrasound picture on the wall, mm-hmm. yeah. and there was a shot of the, the ultrasound picture on the wall. And then it cut to the next scene where it was a flashback of both of them in the doctor's office. I thought that was a cool, so um, off the top of your head, like what, what are some of your like favorite shots, like stylistically? Um, I would have to say the shot where uh, it's right before they uh, go into her so they kept it so you, they kept it like personal. Like it was just, they didn't have nothing else to play off in the background. And it's just like those, it was like one of those, it felt like a, like a 90s kind of shot, like that very interpersonal shot. So that was uh, one scene that I liked. The film, the film, definitely, the film definitely got um, real personal. I think um, that's what made it good too, is they kept it personal the whole throughout. But I think maybe my favorite shot was, um, I always like the kind of the aerial views, like when you're looking down from a character, but they had that one shot where he laid on a bed and it, you know, is looking from above them, like a ceiling, like from the ceiling fan type type feel. And then he's laying on a bed and then she flops down on the bed um, opposite, uh, opposite of him. So I, I, I enjoy, I, I always enjoy those aerial shots and I thought it was, you know, a meaningful shot like of them. Closer to the, closer to the end, I think. Yeah, yeah, that it was one? closer to the end, yeah. Okay. Okay, I know what you're about. Like he flopped on the bed, yeah. like relief, like, you know, that relief feeling like, you know, we're past that point. And then she laid yeah. down next to him, kind of shared that moment of, kind of you know, like, like, I'm this. on your side. Yeah, yeah. Like that, that was the first one that came to mind. Or this, y'all couldn't see that shit, my bad. Yeah, just, just to add on to what you were saying, X, about it was very personal. They used a lot, a lot of close-ups, a lot of close medium shots, a lot of close-ups, and even, in school, uh, during a, an ex, you probably, I don't know if they told you this, but during my portfolio review, they were looking at, you know, 
the project that I did. And one of the pieces of advice the professor gave me was to use more close-ups and more medium shots to kind of bring in that more personal feel to the project. Yeah, I agree. And we see that we see that in most in a lot of films when it's personal, right? They they use the camera as a tool, you know what I'm saying, and get in those close-up shots to get emotion to, you know what I'm saying, like the shot where he first found out um that it, that her, her um his wife had died. Um, you know, they got those medium close shots. Um, it was a little far to get everybody's reaction. And then it zoomed in um, on Kevin's heart reaction, which I think um, kind of played into the, into why we thought his performance was so well, because one that, that, that in that moment, early in the film, we saw, and it was believable, right? So like it put us on it, like, yo, Kevin Hart can do this. And I think for me personally, it opened up my mind to the rest of his performance. Right. So like at the beginning, going into the film, thinking of, like I said, we're going to get these funny moments from Kevin Hart. Um, it, it was even even like after she passed away and it was at the funeral, they, it kind of was lighthearted. Like it, it didn't feel like there was an act like at an actual funeral. But if I felt like that's something that could possibly be when you got two or three comedians, um, you know, in the room, it would kind of be that kind of feel. So, um, you know, and they always use those close up shots. So, you know, close up shots you know, the camera is what really tells the stories. It's kind of like one of my favorite things is watching, especially in this film, watching, you know, those those moments where, you know, he has to deliver a few lines that are like more poign poignant in nature. And then, you know, everything else is out of focus. He's just the only one in frame. And, you know, when, when he, and it's like that, it's like kind of like subtly telling the audience, like, okay, like nothing else matters. Everything behind me in the background is blurry. And this is just, like this is the only thing. What I'm saying is the only thing that's like currently like important. And so I always, I always like that. They they frame that very well in this film, and they used it in the right moments. So, but I'm a fan of you know I'm always a fan of montages. So there was like a point in time you know just as a passage of time, especially when you gotta go from like age from whatever her being born to age six. So I like seeing things like that incorporated in the films. It doesn't have to always be in like a Rocky movie or anything like that. You can use it in a film like this and still still get the job done. So. Yeah, although like the um the writing was done very well, I, I they they use they use cinematography to their advantage. Like the scene, this was like towards the end where there where he was sitting at the airport about to leave the Croatia, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, wait what? You said Croatia? Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, did I say Croatia? Oh, it's Croatia. My bad. Yeah, Croatia. I don't know my geography like that. My bad, people. But um, <laughs> Croatia. And it was it was kind of like he was just sitting there, and it, he thought back to when Maddie was a kid. Um, well, not a kid. Well, yeah, a kid, but kind of like a toddler going to daycare, and then he looks at the mother that was playing with the child at the airport then That's he the looked to the right he looked to the right and he saw I, th I th think that the girl was going to college or something like that on the phone with her pops so I was yeah. like okay that's a very intelligent way for for them to like for him to think like damn I need to go back I need to be in her life I need to even though I'm not you know I'm not the best I'm not perfect but I really need to go for it so I thought that was like a really cool really cool like scene right there did you identify that as a montage? Uh, yeah. So. Well, I don't think so. Uh, why not? Why or why not? Because I feel like I feel like the main use of a montage in a lot of times. We just we just, just call it flashbacks, right? Okay. Yeah, I would think that's just you know I think uh, the, usually when you use a montage, you kind of like pass in time, like you said. But that's usually where I see montages are being used. It's the past time. Like if you got you, you just met a girl and y'all fall in love. Instead of showing every date and every instance that you fall in love, you just show a quick montage that like, yo, we've been we've been at doing this for ten years or five years or six months or whatever the case may be. So that's I always thought that's what montage was being used for. Mainly was you know to show that time's past. But if I'm just sitting there, you know, daydreaming about the past of what happened, then I think that's just like, you know, like little flashbacks or whatever. You mentioned that it was written very well, which I agree um, that it was written well. And I felt, and I feel like the story was changed in some aspects of being written well. Um, 
to fit Kevin Hart and everything like that. But I think the biggest thing that I've, that's, you know, an obvious change is that it wasn't an ad- adaptation from a true story. Well, from a real, you know, a real story. Um, but from what I, my research, the story, the family, it was a white family. You know what I'm saying? And it has all those signs like, you know, he grew up in Minnesota, a small town in Minnesota, um, that he lives in Boston, you know, different things like that. Um, so how do y'all feel about that? Because, you know, we talk about that all the time when it's reversed, yeah. right? But now it's the other way where, you know, they took a white a white family, a white story, and, you know, and casted black characters and kind of made it a black story. What, what are y'all thoughts on that? Well, I think it's like we okay. said, how, what'd you say? One for the home team. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that's what it was going to be, but I just want, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to get it out there. I wanted to see. Everybody feel that way? One for the whole team? I, I, I have an intelligent answer that I could give. I was just being. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I mean, personally, I just feel like it's like we said last time, somebody said last time, that, um, it shouldn't be done if it it shouldn't be done at all. Like it shouldn't be. I feel like, like I said, if you take out those qualities of it being a black story, when you come, when you when you're stepping over into that lane, you got to do the same thing in reverse. In that story, it was there was like Minnesota. My cousins actually live in Minnesota, so I can actually I actually know black people in Minnesota and like think, things like that. So it's like. Leaving it up to my imagination, you gave me no other reason to believe this wouldn't be a black story. I feel like that's what I was saying. I feel like you have to do like if you're gonna go back and change it to to white actors, you got to take out those qualities that would make this a black story. But that's the, but that's the thing though. Like he, like like before me and Gills, we talked about like what makes it a black story. Mm-hmm. Like what makes it a black center. Outside of, outside, they be thinking you know. If there's crack involved, if there's a, a, a you know a missing parent in the household, um, you know different things like that, they automatically associate that with a black story. But he didn't have that. I mean, he had it in a way, right? Because we didn't see his father; we just saw his mother. But they don't mm-hmm. tell that story since he's older, his mother's older. His father could have passed away from old age, or you know something positive mm-hmm. could have came out of it. Same but they did mention, yeah. But they do mention that you know. He wasn't around or he was a good dude in certain sense in certain cases that he wasn't a good dude they did mention that you know he had a bunch of kids or whatever the case may be um but the, but that can be that could be anyway anybody but they didn't really have those moments of um you know that automatically you know told society was that this is a black story which i is which is one thing that i did enjoy about this story was that they kept the outside political things out of his, out of the story and just told the story, you know, and it's Hollywood. You have you can't just tell a truthful story, right? Like you gotta add some fluff to it. You gotta add, yeah, you know, whatever the case may be, to make it interesting to get people in the seats. And I honestly think that's what they did with making it a black family, right? So it's nobody can sit there and tell me that he didn't that he couldn't have casted a white cast to play that to do that exact same story. Like you could have the, the grandmothers do that regardless of their race, right? You know, that's the grandmothers. That's what they do regardless of, their, of, of who they are. So, but I think, you know, they had an opportunity with Kevin Hart. Um, he's a big name that he's going to put people in the seats. And and, that, and I think that was a money decision over mm-hmm. anything else. You damn sure was about to see Channing Tatum in fatherhood. Like that shit was about, definitely is about to happen, but. You could have. I, I mean, I, 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 I like the direction it could, I like the direction that it Channing Tatum might be the, the, the white uh, Michael B. Jordan, but let's, let's, let's move beyond that. Anyway, but yeah. That was so I, disrespectful. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, in the Yo. amount that they use him, in the amount that they use him, I'm not saying he's as good as an actor. I'm not saying that. Yo, that is I'm not so saying that. disrespectful. I'm not saying, I'm, yeah, am I on the blooper reel right now? No. no, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm not saying, Yo, I'm not saying they're the same. I'm not saying nah, this. I'm saying in the so amount of usage, up. in the Gilles amount of usage, up. no, are you not even letting me. You're not even looking right. Looking right. You're not even letting me. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I, I'm horrible. not. I didn't mean it like that. You I meant mad. like. This this like all right. Can I? Can I chime in now? Yeah. Yes, you're now. You're bro, now. You're now, you're now the king on the blue reel. I'm just like. Please, yo, beast. Please, ship. Your ship has stunk. I don't know what you just did. Oh my please, God. please, John. What were we talking about? What were we talking about? It's like, it's like he be waiting to say some bullshit, man. Yeah. This shit's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he be like, 
<laughs> he wake up yo, every Tuesday. Yo, Gil, Gil, you know it's like you know it's real when when Terrell said it. You know it's real when Terrell said it. I know, I know, I know. But check this out, though. Yo, you see how quick he tried to brush up? He's like, anyway, let's 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 move on. I'm like, yeah. like, you know, <laughs> <you fucking laughs> go. But because I, I, I knew after I said it, I was gonna take it wrong. I was like, I didn't mean it like that. I I'm not explaining myself, whatever. It is what it is. Oh my god. I'll take the L. I'll take the L. I'll take the L. Yo, you're 100 percent You ain't right. got no choice. He said <laughs> you're 100 percent right. Because he said that and said, yeah, so oh. move it on. Like he, he now all of a sudden he want to lead the combos and shit, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> he got on he put it's on his wild, ice skates man. out of there, yo. He put yo, on his ice skates. This man disappeared. To me, I feel like if you cast it white, this is my personal opinion. Y'all can bury me in the comments if y'all want. I don't care. But I feel like if it was a white cast for this particular story, they would have leaned more towards a comedy, which is not what they were trying to do, is what I is my assumption. And I use the word assumption, which is bad, but whatever. So they put Kevin Hart, who is a comedian, but you know Kevin Hart's been trying to like expand his bag for the longest. So this would be the perfect opportunity for him to do that, plus the big name thing and all that, putting the names in the seats and all that. So I feel like that's why they went that direction, but my feeling personally is that this is just like a, it could have been an anybody. It could have been an Indian family. It could have been, because honestly, if, if this was a story, uh, an Indian story starring, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, Hassan Minaj, I'd watch that. And I think it'd be pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, but we don't know, or it, I think it just had to be the right person. But uh, Kevin Hart was definitely the right person for this movie. And um, yeah, that's all I gotta say about that. I think they're acting. I think Listen. their chemistry was crazy. The acting was crazy. Because I think, because I agree with you at the beginning of the film when they're talking to the doctor about they should go in and get the baby now because it's fully mm-hmm. grown. That, that I don't know if it was improv or if that was like written in the script, but that right there that they was able to do, I think is what set off um, the, how truthful their connection uh, as a couple was to where, mm-hmm. I mean, it would be devastating regardless, but, you know, it hit a home of how they built their relationship in a way. It like kind of like led us into that, into that relationship in that little two minutes uh, of whatever that scene was. I like how the theme played out in this entire film, like especially in the beginning, it was that idea that uh, almost like a single father couldn't or doesn't have what it takes to raise their own child and mm-hmm. all the odds were against them. Everyone was like, mm, nah, you can't do it. You, you're, you're where's your wife? Prepared. Yeah, yeah, where's your wife? Like that, that was all set up perfect. Like for you fathers in here, like how, how do you feel about that? Um, who wanna go first? Well, I'll go ahead. I think, yeah, I was about to say, let Beastly go first. Yeah, oh, yeah, we gotta say. Go first. Since, since I'm the super dad up in this mother flu. All right, not, so not according to the hat, not according to the hat. Son. See, that's that's what that's why that's not that's according why to the mug. Not according you're to the learn. Mug. You're okay. gonna learn. You're gonna okay. learn when, you, when you're the super dad. You're past that. That was like <laughs> seven years ago. You don't wear that stuff no more. That's a new dad right there. <laughs> hey, in this. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, know what I don't know what I am then, because I ain't never wear that. I ain't never wear that. Saying, I, hey, uh, hey. I like it though. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not I appreciate here, the small things. Oh yeah, no, no, I feel I you. Like it. it ain't for everybody. Because normally this would not be me, but yeah. this was like a very. They kept it simple. They do yeah. over the top all the time. I wanted them to keep it simple. So that yeah. that they kept it simple, I'm gonna rock the hell out of this shit. I got this shit last year. <laughs> and didn't wear it. It was just up. <laughs> he gonna wear. He gonna be wearing fanny packs soon. Who, me? Oh no, we know. Oh, oh yeah, Bush Man. Gardens. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yo, thank you. It might not be the fanny pack that fanny packs in. the waist. Fanny pack is definitely in. gonna be the, the one on the chick, the one on the neck. Like you could be wearing the shit in the neck. Like, hold on, hold on. Cross hold on. <laughs> <laughs> See if I got shirt, in the shirt, front, in the shirt front. gonna be yeah. tucked in his me... pants. No, nah, but it's gonna be tucked in with a with a with a map of the amusement park, right? Yep. Yo, you definitely gonna have the map. Oh, word, word, word. Hold on, hold on. The uh, the, but the theme, here. the theme that they carried throughout, I, I, I feel like they, you know, um, they did a, definitely a good job of of carrying the theme through, and Kevin did a, a great job of, like, carrying the theme himself, but at the same time proving it wrong, you know, in the end, uh, with with being such a good dad, like, because he did show that, yeah, he's, oh, uh, because every moment, you know, you you just thought like, oh, he's he about to mess up here, and you know, he ended up being all right in the end, you know what I'm saying? But he did show those signs that, you know, he. 
you know, that uh, whatever the stereotype is. But I, I didn't feed into that too much because I, I knew that. I know that most parents, all parents, I would say that all parents that care about their children, especially the way that he showed on his, on the screen, there, there was nothing that he wasn't going to do that was gonna, wasn't going to get the job done anyway. I automatically related with the struggle of some of the stuff, most of the stuff that he was going through. Um, but what I like most about what Kevin Hart was doing is that he didn't realize how great of a dad he was being, but everybody else realized mm. how great of a dad yes. he was being. I think yes. that was really, really important when it came down to the representation because those stereotypes at the end of the day really only affect you um, as a dad. And then based off what, how you accept those or how you take on those, those ideas or whatever, that's what affects the child in the long run. Right. But he was fighting those those, you know, perceived demons that was supposed to be on him that was projected on him that really, in a way, wasn't there. And it turned out that he was just being as good as a dad as anybody else could be. Like he didn't do anything that I myself probably wouldn't have done as a new parent. And it's just um, I felt like that on a represent because you, you definitely get that in real life. You definitely get that in real life. You feel like you like you you focusing on your negatives, the things that you got to take care of. So so. Um, well, you're, you're focused on that 24 seven. You're not even paying attention to it. You like, you're killing this shit. And I think is that's important to have those people around you like um, a, a little bro, like like everybody around him to remind you like, hey bro, you knocking this shit out the park. And like you, you that shit is definitely something you need in real life, like for real. My, my, my favorite scene might've been uh, in the, like right, right in the beginning, like when um he's coming down like in, like little little Rel's uh, characters trying to tell him like, "Yo, man, you're gonna get through this." Yo, remember that time that you was, yeah, you you try to holler at that girl and you know and she shut you down, but you got through it. He was like, "What what the fuck are you talking about?" So I'm like, "My wife just died. I'm about to punch you in the face. Get the fuck out." Nah, of nah, nah. What yo, that shit was that yo, shit was hilarious yeah. to me. That, that shit, was I was dying. Was I had to pause it because it was poison ivy. It was poison ivy. Oh yeah, poison ivy. He was like, he was like, yo. Nah, it was two separate stories. He did, he did that more than once. Oh, okay. uh, the very first, yeah, yeah, the very first story was the girl. Was yeah, the girl. Yeah, the poison yeah, the ivy was, one was the uh, was the other one. The poison ivy was when he was at the funeral and he said, "Yo, I'm about. How does that even relate? Like my wife yeah. is dead. I'm about to punch you in the face because he was <laughs> he saying when you were young, you went camper. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. So much worse. Let's go into the final thoughts and um and go ahead and rate this. What's your final thoughts, Gary? Me, uh, final thoughts. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was a great film. I, I like the idea of the marketing, just putting it on, uh, like right when the Father Father's Day comes out. Mm -hmm. um, Perfect. It's and it's something that everybody can sit and enjoy home. You can. It wasn't too heavy handed where you can't enjoy it with the family. I mean, I, you pretty much can enjoy it with all ages. If you know the language was, was straight, uh, not too many crazy scenes in there. Um, yeah, it was a solid movie, and I have no regrets watching it. I, I'll watch it again. Yeah. What's your rating? <laughs> oh, I thought I thought we're gonna wait. I thought we're gonna wait. Everybody, nah, I thought, I thought I wanna we're gonna know your rating right now. I and then, and then we give right everybody now. a rating. Final thoughts, okay. rating. Let's I'm go. Like, okay. what's your rating? No, I thought I thought no, because I thought that's that's normally how we do it, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, whatever. Um, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go. People's choice. Okay. Thanks. Um, I'm not mad at the people's choice. I I I, I say I say it was a. I, I think it was a great film. I think it really touched on, on on representation from all angles, from single fathers to different family dynamics. Like I, I really think it touched all those bases. And um, I saw a performance out of Kevin Hart that I'm sure no one saw coming. So um, I, I'll, I'm giving it a real. Okay, certified. I first certified. <laughs> okay. I'm not mad. Listen, when you came when you came on with your outfit today, I already knew the certified yeah. was coming. Hey, I know hey. it's coming. I seen the stamp. Hey. I seen the stamp hey. right in your back pocket. So come on. Bro. What's hey. good? What's good, Beastly? What's your thoughts? Final thoughts and rating myself. Um, all right. Final thoughts on this movie. Uh, this is an exceptional film. Uh, brought to you by Kevin Hart. He brought a lot of range, a lot of. A lot of emotions. Um, I, me personally, I, I, I connected with this movie on a lot of levels, being that I dealt with death in, in the family. Um, not my spouse, but death that close and dealing with children and having to deal with the aftermath and the grieving and moving forward and all that. So this movie hit me like real hard. And, you know, being a real big fan of Kevin Hart and him 
being able to uh, portray feelings in a way that it wasn't so heavy, you know what I'm saying? Even though there was some heavy moments, it wasn't so heavy. You felt all right, you know, at watching this. Um, it's not something that you, one of the movies you're going to dread watching, like, oh, I can't watch that. It makes me cry. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? There's some sad parts, but it's not like that. Um, I think it was just a, a great movie, great choice. Uh, it's, it's getting a real for me, certified. Certified. Uh, I'm agree. certified. I'm agree with everybody so far. I think um, um, it had its heavy moments, and I think it had to have it. Obviously, it had to have a heavy moment. I think once, once it, it kind of puts you on a nice high horse, it hits you with the heavy moment, and then it gets back up on that high horse, even in his low moments, because I think heavy moments and low moments um, are a little bit different. So there's a lot of low moments, but there's not a lot of heavy moments. Um, but I like I like it mo mostly because this is something I've never seen from Kevin Hart. So now I'm looking at Kevin Hart. I'm a little bit different when it comes to the acting uh, spectrum. Um, I'm interested and want to see more of this and plus from him. And then I think the main thing was like I was um, rooting for his character, the whole film and everything that he did. And because of that, including the production and what everybody else said, um, I'm also going to give it a certified. What you got, Terrell? Last the fathers went three for three on the certifies. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. It, it hits you. It just hits you differently. It hits you differently. When you're a dad. I, I, I respect. I respect yeah. it. I, yeah, I respect it. It really does, because because even when you have, it. even when you have your spouse there, there's moments where you're by yourself with your kid and you're just looking at your kid like, yo, that's me. We got to get through this day. You know what I'm saying? Or this month, hey. or this year, or whatever the case may hey. be. So. Things that normally work ain't working. They just crying like it, it and happens. It's, and your kid and your your kid is really different when your mom when the mom is around and when the mom is not around. Like your kid is they really di different. Bro. And and vice versa, they different yeah. when you ain't around. Uh -huh. Not to cut you off, Terrell. My bad. Go ahead. Last. No, 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 Terrell. Oh. To cut to, to cut you off intentionally. <laughs> um, the you got a real you got a real decision to make here. You can. You can go with them right now and be certified and make me look like an asshole for calling this shit a people's choice. Yeah, or, you gotta look like an asshole. Or you can, you can go on you your own way like and, and do whatever you want. It's up to Terrell, you. I'm not, I'm not no pressure. If it's Terrell, you. if Terrell you know says what I mean? certified, is, you have, what if, Terrell, if Terrell say certified, you have to change yours so we can give him us five straight through certified. If come on, what? it makes no sense that no people say certified. I'm the Eastern European people. judge at the gymnastics. You know, on, go ahead, Terrell, because it's he's bubble. Come on, another blooper for that's two bloopers tonight. Go ahead. That, that's not a blooper. Listen, <laughs> just off the strength <laughs> of Kevin Hart's phenomenal acting, uh, shit. the relationship between him and the kid. Lil Rel's comedy, phenomenal production quality, believable acting. Still going. We're still going. <laughs> Certified We're real. still going. Certified real. Dee, 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 dee. What is Gills thinking? Gills. <laughs> you know what? Gills, you Jack feel it. I know Jack you feel like what was that one movie that we reviewed where I was I got it all messed up. I think it was one of the first review we did. I forgot what movie was that was. Uh, the first it, movie it, it was one of the early ones. It was like it was early one of the one, first so, yeah. ones. Everybody else had a, a different one, and I had a, a different one. And because I, I said something, and then oh yeah, we all attacked you. Yeah, spazzed out. Like, Why would you do that? Why would you say that? Like. <laughs> Fucked up. It was a, uh, it was American, must... skin. American skin. American well, skin. Yeah, it might have been. It might have been American <laughs> oh, no, no. skin. Yeah. Which... I was gonna like, say wait. I thought it would have been outside the wire because I don't remember that shit. No, it was American yeah. skin because they were like, wait, so you liked the movie, but you yeah. gave it a. Uh... Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, people. You know, another another mm -hmm. uh, review down. Um, mm -hmm. it was a dope movie. Obviously, we all say you should go see it. It's on. It's out on Netflix right now. Mm -hmm. Go check that out. Right. Um, right. obviously, you can't really listen to Gills because. He's a little off, but we gonna move on. You know what I'm saying? I like the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate y'all tuning in with us. Definitely go check it out, and we out. Come on. Certified, certified, real. Hey, I'm a little excited. You heard it here first. Certified, real. Everybody. You are now listening to Real Talk Podcast. This is certified.